guide here from the jungle uh, her two strongest roles to me are jungle and solo lane and I want to really show how strong she is when she gets to spec a little bit more into the damage department so we'll be starting off with assassin's blessing tier one mace health pot and a hand of the gods of course as a jungle we are going to get blink we would not get blink if we were against necessarily somebody like a um, like an Ares or something that we had to have the beads. But that is not the case this game. All there is is a Xing Tian. Pretty easy to avoid his ultimate as AMA. Uh, famous last words. We're going to be starting with Brilliant. our two on AMA in the jungle. Pretty much everywhere as well. Gives you some sweet damage as well as some mitigations. And it charges up damage uh, the longer you keep it proc'd on you. So it has a base amount of damage that it is charging up the longer that it's going. And also as you deal damage during that ability, it will also do damage and it does a lot of base damage. It also doesn't have too bad of a cooldown, um, which is nice. Only about 12 seconds. Doing our normal jungle start, speed buff to blue buff to camp. Allows us to get over to mid very quickly. Get your dash second on AMA. Your dash is also a silence. Uh, it'll do damage if you hit your target. It will also silence them. Good movement ability, but also good aggressive ability. And it builds up... Um, it builds up your two when you need the damage on it. I'm going to look to go a little aggressive here. I'm just going to blink onto this Scylla. That's fine. I like to do a little bit of aggressive plays early. Just try to put the pressure on him he does not have his red buff throw down my ward right here behind me move over to this red buff start up this red click my two i'm gonna hold it for secure to make sure that we get that we should be able to fight this Scylla does not have dash um so i'm trying to use my silence to get around that wall not gonna have enough uh to continue onward there Getting a second point in my two for that bonus damage. You can already see it hitting 192. And that was not a that was not a fully charged uh, ability right there. That was basically half charged. That's how much damage it's already hitting for. Also a fairly safe ability uh, to use. Usually don't have to get too greedy for it. That was only 98 because I didn't get any of the charge on my... Um, damage dealing while it was up. Mid Arby's are down. I'm gonna go right for our back camp. On AMA in the jungle, we are looking towards uh, cooldown, is gonna be the major stat that we are looking for. We have tons of base damage built into our kit. Um, AMA's passive gives her extra damage. Um, for those that don't know, the AMA passive, the more you auto attack somebody, the more damage that you get. They have increased damage taken. Uh, you stack on them up to three times, up to 30% damage taken, which is why AMA is so good at doing objectives like Fire Giant. Uh, we've also got our one procced on us. Our one has two different forms. It has a movement speed and a power form. The red form is going to give you extra damage in the form of bonus power, 10 to 30. The uh, movement speed form is going to give you 5 to 21% movement speed. I generally recommend using uh, the movement speed form uh, because of how powerful it is in team fights. Uh, your damage form is good, though, for switching to right before um, you use some big abilities uh, while you're doing a objective. And, of course, every time you press it, and switch between your two stances, it also gives you a little heal, which is nice for the sustain. Don't go now. now we level up our ultimate. You're gonna level up your ultimate on AMA every time you get the opportunity to. So every four levels. Now that I'm level five, I can feel a little bit more comfortable going for a gank. Your level order on AMA is going to be your ulti is your utmost priority, then your two. 
Then I like to level up the one and then the dash last. You can level up the dash before... Before the... Um, one if you want to. But I just think that the... Uh, I think that the movement speed is just way too strong uh, to not utilize. Forcing out the Chiron Aegis right there. You can see how easily we chased him inside of his uh, ultimate. Excuse me, inside of his dash uh, while we were in our ultimate. On AMA, your standard combo that you're looking to do in order to deal damage is going to be you press your two. Then you use your dash to get in range of them. This is going to silence them. So you just do your little two dash, let your two go off. Or if you're doing your full combo, you're looking for your starting your two, dashing into them, then starting your ultimate. Your two will continue to channel, will continue to fire during your ulti. Um, you can be using both at the same time. You can't start channeling your two after your ult, so you want to make sure you're clicking it beforehand. So the process has been started, so it goes off during your ulti. This also means that you can basically set yourself up so that you don't miss the ability. Um, if you click your two, then your ulti, uh, you can get them into the stun before your two goes off. That way they're standing still so you can hit them. You can also cancel your two early on AMA like I did right there. I didn't need a fully charged waiting three seconds in order to get that off. So if you just press your two again, it will fire the ability early. You'll find that you fire the ability early quite often. Uh, you're not certainly waiting for it to be uh, stacked all the way. When you leave the base, make sure you switch to your movement speed form so you can get back out faster. Get back out to your farm. And then once you reach those camps, you can switch back over to your power stance to make sure you are farming the creeps quicker. Your middle tower is under attack. Enemy missing middle! AMA thrives at doing objectives around the map, the gold fury, the fire giant. So you can look to go for those objectives early with your team because she gives the team so much bonus damage. I gotta be a little bit careful here, actually. Doo, doo, doo. Try to use my bonus movement speed to waddle away. Waddle, waddle, waddle. Don't even have to use my ulti. That is fine. Good peel from the Kumakarna as well. You can keep switching back and forth with your stances in the jungle. Reminder, it does give you that little heal prog. Um, so you can sustain up pretty nice, especially once you get your Assassin's Blessing proccing on camps. You can actually heal up uh, a fair amount for a fairly low cost mana, only 50 mana on that one. Um, just to clarify on the passive a little bit more, you have to auto attack them three times. When you auto attack the target three times, that's when you apply that weakening aura. Um, so if you wanted to have it fully stacked on a target, that would be nine auto attacks in order to get the full bonus 30% um, damage that you can stack onto them. It's not like one stack per auto attack. That would be busted. It's already super strong. Uh, it is one stack per three auto attacks. Our items that we're going to be looking to go into on AMA right now are going to be Jones Wrath and Erendite. Talaria Boots gives us some good movement speed to keep up with targets. We combine that with our one. Dang it, that was up. Misplay from your boy. We can look to gank this guy. Pop my two. Pop my silence. That's fine. Switch over to damage form now. Chasing him down with the ulti. He's going to be stunned. Whoa. No, unfortunately, that was a good Shing Ten play. He actually used his jump. It avoided the first bit of damage on the ulti. That was a good uh, jump from Shing Ten. It has immunity frames on his jumps nowadays because they are elite. You have to hit every stage um, of AMA ult in, in order to get the increased effects, which we should probably talk about. Um, 
The first land of your AMA ult is just regular damage. If you land it a second time, it does increased damage by 20% and it slows them. And if you hit the third one in a row, it'll do 40% increased damage and it uh, stuns the enemy for two seconds. That slow also lasts two seconds, but you do have to actually hit uh, all of them, but you don't have to hit it consecutively on the same target. So if I hit Chiron with the first part of my one and then Hercules with the second part and then Chiron again with the third, it would stun Chiron still. You don't have to hit the same target. You just have to hit a target with it uh, in order to keep getting the increased effect. We gotta be a little bit careful back here. This is kind of greedy, but we do have good damage. Okay. Go ahead, pop that too, get that little easy kill. Um, for AMA too as well, it will go through walls. I'm like a hunt. I'm like I'm like 90 percent sure. I feel like I should test this really quick. Okay, it does go through walls. I was pretty sure it went through walls. I'm like I'm pretty sure I got a kill with it just like yesterday through walls. Um, so you can use that ability through wall. Your dash does not go through walls. Your ulti does not go through walls. But you can, in fact. Um, Use your two, uh, much like a lot of villages might. They go through walls. Now that we've got our two ranked up all the way, we're going to start ranking up our one to get the extra damage from the passive. Also on your ultimate, you don't... Um, as long as you hit something with your ultimate, it's going to continue to channel the charge. Um, so, like, if you hit an, uh, a minion with your ulti and then you switch over to the god, you can still get that last stun effect. Um, you just have to be hitting it on something. Just got to be hitting it on something. For warding here in the jungle, I like deep wards on their buffs. Preferably trying to get wards near the um, red and speed, if at all possible. Going to go ahead and steal that red buff. Switch over to my movement speed stand so I can catch up to the Kali. Switching over to my damage stance for one, trying to get this purple, but two... The heal as well. Switching back over to movement speed to try to catch back up. That's Chiron's dash down. I'm going to blink in and look for the ulti. That is his Aegis. That's fine. I'm going to try to get myself out of this. I'm actually in trouble right now. We got to try to retreat. Luckily, we are AMA. When you're running away as AMA, make sure you've got your movement speed stance on. There's really no reason to um, not use the movement speed stance when you're trying to get away. When you combine it and Talaria boots, it is nearly impossible for the enemy to catch up to you without some sort of uh, a like like blink or something to try to catch up in range, or if they've got Talaria boots themselves. Even at this point of the game, with only two points into it, it's giving me nine percent movement speed. That's basically a whole item at this point in the game that aren't boots. Um, so trying to catch up to that is just just ridiculously hard and it's the reason why i also um right and cut that ability head and back over trying to help out my boy arthur i'm switching over to the movement speed so that arthur can run away if he wants to looks like he actually wants to go in on this fight which is fine because he wants to fight this so i'm gonna try to switch back over to damage but the fight's already over all right Keep in mind that your one is group wide. I did not mention that. Your entire team gets the benefit of your one. All of this movement speed, all of this power. So yes, you've done the math correctly. If you have your one proct, that is over 100% bonus movement speed to your team if you so desire. Um, it's basically a permanent sprint on everybody on your team. And yes, it does stack with sprint. Uh, one of the more, if not the most annoying abilities, in my opinion, in the entire game. Um, for our goal, moving into a little bit more of the team fight stage on a more damage oriented AMA, we're trying to look at the back line. We're very hard for squishies to deal with because we've got the cc immunity on the ulti and the silence you can put a lot of pressure and a lot of damage out before they can even do anything you can see that the Scylla took half of her hp from that before 
basically anything had even happened. Got a little ulti right here. That's gonna be Kali ult for us. I'm keeping my movement speed buff on for now. Now I'm gonna switch over to the heal so I can get a little bit more sustain out. Oh no, I screwed up. Oh, it's okay. I tried to pop my two, but the two um, kind of like Sobek ulti, the two on AMA has a very small delay on it. You can't pop it instantly just like Sobek ult. You have to slightly wait for the ability to kind of like start. And then you can pop it again. Um, so keep that in mind that there is that small little delay. You can't pop it instantly. As much as you would like to sometimes. Gonna get myself that red for the team. I'm not messing with the Shing Ten. They're probably gonna start Gold Fury. I'm gonna get my third point in my ultimate. Kali ulti is down, which means this could be a decent little fight opportunity for us. I'm gonna wait for Chiron to dash. See if I can't silence him out of it. Unfortunately, the uh, Xing Tian is still here, so I can't really mess with that at all. AMA's objective seal potential is not bad. Just like that, not too shabby. I might go down for this. Um, but the combination of your ultimate being CC combined with the fact that you've got your two proccing does give you some solid opportunity to walk up and steal an objective. Uh, if you time it right, because you will have them all stunned right if the objective is getting low health. And then you can pop your two in order to finish securing it. Kind of like just happened. Enemy ultimate down. You don't have to use AMA's um, dash in order to initiate a fight. It is a valid strategy to uh, keep it as a getaway skill. I also like to keep it as a um, as an interrupt as well. So kind of like earlier in that fight, I was waiting for Chiron to dash first because if he dashed first and then I dashed into his dash, it would silence him out of it and take the cooldown. So that way I could just kind of sit there uh, and beat on his horse butt. So you don't always want to initiate with it. Sometimes you want to keep it for a more strategic play. I'm going to start the Pyromancer. AMA is actually pretty good at soloing objectives because she gets that bonus damage and she has the sustain. Um, you can, for the most part, walk over and just kind of do objectives by yourself. Oh, go ahead and pop our two to make sure we get the secure on that. We've gotten the gold fairy. We've gotten the portal. Not a horrible start. Um, AMA gets stronger as the game goes on. You really start to thrive in team fights when you're giving everybody that aura, when you're giving them uh, either bonus damage or, of course, that bonus movement speed, which really is the better option. Bonus movement speed to get everybody moving around. Try to peel a little bit in the back. Looking for this Xing Chen. He had just jumped. Switch back to my damage stance before I pop the two. So we can grab that kill as well. There's a Kali coming over. I need to be careful. Let my man, I'm giving this guy some bonus movement speeds. So hopefully he can start running away. I'm just trying to get the Kali off him. I'm trying to stick in range to make sure he's got the bonus movement speed. And just like that, even though I'm a damage dealer playing it from the jungle, I can give him that bonus movement speed so that the Kali, even with her build, having that bonus movement speed is actually slower uh, than the Scylla because we provided him that little buff. Now, um, as we're transitioning our build now, we've got 30% CDR. I like to get a little bit tankier as the game progresses on AMA, but I still want to do hybrid uh, type items. Um, so I like to look at the void shields of the world. Um, Pridvin's not actually horrible for the cooldown, depending on the items you bought earlier. If you didn't go a Jotun's Wrath, getting a good Pridvin uh, can be nice. Genji's Guard, uh, Runic Shield, items like that. I like to transfer her into a little bit of hybrid in the late game, uh, but trying to maintain 30 to 40 percent cooldown she definitely benefits from high cdr 
being able to switch back and forth between your forms, being able to pop more ultis, more silences. You do have a good bit of crowd control in your kit. So that was Chiron Dash. You can see that I got interrupted by my dash. Um, you can also see that the Hercules right there, that was a good example. Hercules got stunned, even though he wasn't hit by my um, abilities earlier. And that is uh, because Chiron had charged up my ultimate. I didn't need to hit, hit Herc three times in a row in order to stun him. I just needed to have hit something. Uh, so Hercules and Chiron got stunned from that. Also during that fight, we silenced the Chiron right out of his dash so that he couldn't get away. Really good use of AMA is to make sure that you're taking people out of channeled abilities. Silences are very, very strong in Smite, um, specifically for that purpose. Whether it's a Guan Yu using Talo Assault, whatever, interrupting channels, taking away people's getaways or their damage is significant. Heck, even if Scylla throws out the first part of her dash, you silence him, he can't connect to the second part of his dash until after the silence is off of him. Get me the good good. I'm gonna go into a Genji's guard. I like the extra cooldown proc from Genji's guard a lot. I find it to be extremely beneficial. Um, much like a lot of the other characters that we build um, Jotun's Wrath on. You preferably want to sell Jotun's Wrath as you get later in the game. It's very much an early to mid game item. Uh, I love it for the high CDR power in the pen that it gives early. Just such great stats. As you get later in the game, as you start getting to the red pot stage of the game, that gives 10% 10, 10 CDR. As you can start to afford uh, more expensive items that are a little bit more specific in what they give that also happen to give 10% CDR. Uh, you'll often find that you're capping your cooldown by like 10% or something, and that's fine. Don't worry about capping by 10%, but as the game progresses, if you can try to uh, make it a little bit more efficient, that's great. That Scylla ulti just reset, I gotta be a little careful. Carly's hmm. heading right side, I'm gonna chase him. Keep my movement speed buff up for the chase. Wait for the jump. There we go. Throw down the ulti. He's going to have to ult or he's dead. He's just going to die. All right. Shing Ten ult down. He missed. There's probably a Scylla coming this way. I don't really care to fight so much on the um, Hercules Shing Ten. I'm not going to waste too much time there. I'm I'm looking towards the Chiron, the Scylla, the Kali. Throw back over to my one to make sure I get that heal off. I'm getting poked out pretty hard, actually. So I need to be a little careful. Our Scylla's dead. I want to go secure the red. Whoa! But there's a Chiron right there, actually. So we're not going to be able to secure that red. Almost got enough for my Genji's guard. Positioning for AMA and team fights. You'd like to be pretty close um, to your team. Because you're giving them all of that bonus stats, you want to make sure that you're in range to maximize the stats that you're giving them. Uh, give as many people movement speed, as many people uh, power as you can. Ow, 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 ow. That's a very low Chiron. Kali's dashing in. Movement speed for everyone. Live, boys. There we go. Yeah, love to see it. Movement speed for the chase as we're going right down this line. Here we go. Oh, unfortunately, Kumba Karna got to get taken down right there. So do do try to make sure that you're fighting within your team. Um, your one doesn't have a crazy long uh, radius on it. Actually, it's kind of small. But the 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 benefit that it gives out is anything but small. It is extraordinarily large. Keep in mind when you go into these team fights, sometimes you want to keep your two on you for a little bit longer, even if uh, 
even if you could have popped it earlier because it does give you you know self damage mitigations which is nice um up to 15 percent mitigations which is i mean that's a significant amount of damage reduction so helping that two stay on you so you maintain a little bit of a uh, damage reduction is uh is is pretty nice because when you fire it out you lose your damage reduction so keep in mind that it can also be kind of defensive uh just using it as the channel even if you don't want to walk up and slap somebody in the head with it gonna go over to the gold fury they've got the oracles i don't care I'm AMA. I've got my passive up from my team. I'm getting the passive proc on this gold fury. They are going to be swinging at it. We probably should have been able to burn this faster, but we did force the Scylla ult. She is silenced. She's missing a lot, actually. She's going to try to come around this wall, so I'm going to be here waiting for him. He has nowhere to go, and he knows it. What's up, Herc? Movement speed for the boys. Silencing the Herc so he can't go nowhere. Pop the two. Get the kill. Uh, you can you pop AMA 2. You should be able to pop even if you're crowd controlled. I do not believe there is anything stopping you uh, from using it. There shouldn't be anything that stops that second trigger. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm pretty sure um, that you can pop it regardless. Head over the fire giant. You can also run from the objective to objective really fast with AMA. Uh, so just getting from the gold fury to the pyromancer and then of course switch back over to your power stands. Try to give your boys a little bit of that extra damage. It is wonderful. She is a late game god. So in the early game, I'd be a little bit careful about going for ganks too early. Um, your 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 pre-level five gank is not that strong. Your post-level five gank is very strong. Being able to silence plus range burst damage plus a stun plus a slow, a lot of CC plus giving everybody in your team extra movement so they can catch up, get some extra damage off. It makes her ganking strong once you hit that level five point. So I would recommend early on, just go ahead, get your farm on, almost role play like you're a Bakasura. You're walking around, you're farming your brains out. You're just waiting to level five until you can gank. Once you get your level five, go for your gank and then continue to gank every time that your ultimate comes up. Okay. Hercules is gonna waddle away. Waddle, waddle, waddle till the very next day we should look for a dive underneath this tower for Scylla this is a tier one I'm gonna go in hot I'm just gonna dash right in pop the all way for Scylla to come back down big damage on top of him still kind of waiting for him to try to leave he did not trying to get my Kali out of here my excuse me my Kali my Scylla away from their Kali we've got the bonus movement speed right now I'm gonna keep it on us switching over to damage I've got my beads up. They're pretty low, but we don't really have an opportunity to keep fighting. If they leave out of this tower, we could turn it, but yeah, Hercules is running the movement speed build, which is very annoying. You can see him shield of regrowth and the Talaria boots. Got to be very careful, uh, difficult to deal with. I'm gonna get a late game Brawlers. Brawlers is never a bad item. Uh, Anti-heal in general is never bad. Against this team comp, it's gonna be very effective against the Hercules. It's also gonna be decent um, against Kali. If she gets a passive proc, Lifesteal does work on Kali's passive to reduce the amount of healing uh, that it does, which is wonderful. Uh, you can see right now that I've got 40% CDR, which means that if I had a red pot, I would be capped. So I've got an opportunity to get rid of my Jones Wrath as we get a little bit further into the game. And grab a different item, rotating over my team. So pop over, make sure I'm using the one for movement here. And now to try to start a team fight. 
try to make the party happen. I'm fairly heavily specced into damage over tankiness. A little hybrid, but definitely leaning into damage in the jungle roll. If you were playing her solo, you would be leaning uh, basically the other way. Take your lean into tankiness with a little bit of into damage. You just flip it right on around. Coming into the back of this fight, trying to keep Scylla out of it. She does dash away. Trying to chase back down for this Kali. She has silence, so she couldn't pop her ulti. But she did manage to get it off in time. Bonus movement speed, so we can try to avoid the Chiron ult. I'm waiting for him to use his dash. There's the Aegis. There's the beads. Interrupting the silence. Oh, interrupting his dash with the silence. He just didn't quite die. Luckily, Scylla making it happen. Ooh, how about a little bit of bonus movement speed to catch up with a little hunky lead. He's dead. He knows it. He's rooted. He's rooted. He's rooted. He's rooted. He's rooted. He's rooted. Keep popping my one for the heal. They've got three members back underneath their tower. I've got ulti up in five seconds. Kali ulti will still be down. She doesn't have nearly as much cooldown. I'm going to call for the gank because I'm about to blink in on this. Three, two, one. Here we go. Looking at Scylla. Go ahead. Pop my one for the heal. Oh, Scylla's going to land it on me right there. Unfortunately, we just couldn't quite put him down. Yeah, that one HP is still going to be a good trade for us. We should be able to get the tier two off of that. What I could have probably done there is I switched over to my damage stance in order to get the uh, heal proc. What would have been the better play there is to actually not have used it and maintain the bonus movement speed. That bonus movement speed would have given me the an opportunity to continue uh, to probably just run in a straight line away from the Scylla instead of having uh, to basically play the guessing game and juke back and forth and hope that she chooses wrong. Uh, would have been the right option. Although, to be fair, she is level 20 Scylla. Level 20 Scylla gains 70% movement speed in her ulti. So, like, you can't really outrun it. Um, so, it's definitely, uh, definitely, uh, but it's, it's a hard situation. Got a sentry ward over for the fire giant. Bam, bam. Head on over. They could probably do Gold Fury while we do Pyro. Might be able to get both of these objectives done at the same time. Here at the end of the game, we're going to be getting rid of our Talaria boots. We're going to lose a little bit of movement speed um, as we as this Talaria boots is transitioning to just a regular uh, speed pot. We don't have to make up for that movement speed. It's not mandatory. Uh, it's never a bad idea right now to buy movement speed items, whether that's going to be a wing blade, a relic, dagger, stone cutting, sword, or whatever. Movement is an extremely strong stat. You can, if you want to go a little bit more crazy, get like a shield of regrowth on AMA. It does proc on her one. Um, oh, you'll need this when you're famous. So it's basically as good on her as it is on Hercules. Looking to pop this Magi's on Kali. We got it. But I actually got to be careful. Still up. Oh, but I, oh, I just barely got in range of that. Trying to run away from the boys. Not going to be able to make it away. We did get the Scylla. Plus, we forced a lot on the Kali and the Chiron. Doesn't seem like the team has had the same level of success in the back line against Shing Tan and Hercules that their team had against me, unfortunately. Um, that's a very unfortunate fight for us. Um, so right there, that was a fine play. We assassinated the Scylla in the back line pretty easy. Um, and then the Kali and the Chiron came for us. Unfortunately, it looks like our team lost the 4v2 in the back line, which is unfortunate. Uh, what are you going to do? You got to just be able to rely on your team for that. They might go for the end here. They're 
They're gonna get the Phoenix for sure, but are they gonna go for the whole thing? They are gonna go for the whole thing. I'm gonna commit to a big damage item, biggest damage item I can get, which is Transcendence. I don't think it's gonna matter. Throw down the ulti ASAP for the big stun. No, not gonna be able to get in range, but that's what you're looking to do on the AMA jungle. You've got a ton of power output. You've got a ton of movement speed to utilize for the rotations. Um, great objective play with the bonus power that you give to your team, plus your passive that applies on those objectives. So make sure that you're looking for ganks after level five with your ulti. Make sure you're using your two uh, aggressively and defensively huh? for the mitigations, for the damage. Make sure you're using one aggressively and defensively, and you can easily do 30,000 damage uh, even while you're on the losing team. Hmm. And that, guys, is the AMA guide. That's how you get some AMA.